<clears throat> Good morning, everyone. So today we're going to be talking about Proposition 61, also known as the California Drug Price Relief Act. Uh, many of you probably heard the story about Martin Screlly. He's a pharmacy CEO who raised the price of a very important life-saving drug from $13.50 per pill to over $750 a pill. And this angered a lot of people uh, because this guy's making this huge profit off of people's lives, essentially. And it really spurred uh, in motion the whole we have to stop pharmacy greed movement. And um, that's where Proposition 61 is really born from. Uh, it really has the imp or put potential to impact California's drug industry, so it's important you guys pay attention so you guys can make an informed decision on election day. Um, so that's what this speech is mostly going to talk about. We're going to talk about the impact of Prop 61, what it does and what it does not do. We're going to talk about different sides, what each side says will result if Prop 61 is passed. And we're going to talk about the uh, who supports Prop 61 and who's opposed to it, because that really shows uh, whose potential interests are at stake, and I think that's really important. Um, so, what does Prop 61 actually do? Well, according to Chester Good, he's a, he has an MD and he's a professor, or he has a Master's of Public Health, and he sent an article to the American Health Association in 2008 that he feels the Department of uh, Veteran Affairs has the best prescription drug purchasing plan of any government agency out there, and he feels that the um, uh, he feels that the any government agency that administers prescription drugs should use uh, the VA as, mo as a model. And that's actually exactly what Prop 61 does. Uh, it forces the state of California to purchase drugs at the same price that the VA purchases those same drugs at, because they get them lower than anyone else in the country. So uh, a couple things, though. It does exclude prescription drugs that the VA does not prescribe to veterans. It excludes people who are uh, not on a California health care program. It excludes people on who are on a California Medi-Cal care management program, which we'll talk about later too. And it actually does not regulate the pharmacy companies one bit. It only forces the state to buy at the same level that the VA purchases for those same drugs. So this spurs a lot of debate, and this gets into my next uh, section. Um, what each side says is going to result if Prop 61 is passed. So um, when, so according to uh, Chester Good, he, or I'm sorry, Christine Mike Duke, she's a uh, political reporter for the LA Times, she said uh, last month, actually, in 2006, September 2016, that up to 76% of voters would like to see televised debates of California propositions. And in hearing this, the pro Prop 61 group has gone ahead and purchased 30 minutes of uh, television airtime. And they've invited the CEOs from the pharmacy companies to come and debate Prop 61, but they've not been taken up on their offer yet. So, um, but nonetheless, pro Prop 61 supporters really want to stop pharmacy greed. They want to save the state a lot of money, up to seven and a half billion dollars, and they want to spur other states to adopt similar laws to this as well. The opposition, however, claim that for one, it's going to hurt veterans because the VA or the pharmacy companies are going to have no choice, according to them, but to raise prices for the VA to make up for their loss in profits, which is going to make veterans have to pay more out of pocket. Um, they also claim that it doesn't affect enough Californians. Only 22% of Californians are on a California health care program. The other 88% are on private health care, for example. And uh, it doesn't affect enough Californians, according to them. And finally, they claim it's a fraud because the author of Prop 61, Michael Weinstein, is actually uh, the CEO of the AIDS Healthcare Foundation. And um, which is interesting because he's exempted his healthcare foundation from uh, Prop 61's effects. And AIDS, the AIDS Healthcare Foundation actually does make prescription or make money off of selling prescription drugs. So um, that kind of leads into my, my final um, topic. Who supports each side? Well, according to the Fair Political Practices Commission, which is a government organization that ensures um, fair, transparent campaigns, they said in their website uh, last month, 2016, that uh, up to $14.5 million has been donated in support of Prop 61, um, most of that coming from the AIDS Healthcare Foundation. On the other side, $86 million has been donated from um, pharmaceutical companies. And keep in mind, these are the same pharmaceutical companies who are donating all this money that are um, claiming that they will have no profits if this uh, proposition is passed. They'll have to raise prices on veterans, according to them. So, um, but nonetheless, you know, uh, Prop 61 really has um, a lot of different aspects to it that you guys need to weigh out. And um, ultimately, uh, uh, it, it's, um, 
it's up to you guys to make an informed decision. So um, what we talked about today is we talked about the impact of Prop 61, what it does and what it does not do. We talked about the opposing sides, what they say may result. And finally, we talked about who supports these side and how much they contribute. Um, so I don't think there's anyone of us who um, disagrees with the fact that pharmacy greed is something that should be addressed. But whether that's something uh, Prop 61 uh, is going to do or something in the future is ultimately up to you guys, the voter. So I encourage you guys to go out and vote. Um, and thank you.